Hello, Keith Rucker here at FinishMachinery.org. Guys, and today we're out here in the shop and again working here on the Stoker engine. But I want to take a couple minutes and kind of introduce you to uh, someone that's been a big help here in this project and has actually just helped me out again on some other stuff. We just had our Iron Fest South event and he came all the way out from California to attend yeah. the event and he also brought along some cars. So introduce yourself, tell us about your YouTube channel, and we'll kind of go from there. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Keith. Hi, I'm Dave Everhart, and I've got the YouTube channel Dragonfly Engineering, and it's a machining and injection molding uh, channel that uh, focuses on mechanical engineering and the manufacturing of those things. And um, yeah, I've been in the, the business for about 25 years. I've got a consulting company out in California where I help a lot of the Silicon Valley companies fabricate their their new inventions. So that's kind of how I've come to where I am now to help Keith out with some of his uh, yeah. stuff. So several years ago, we were really getting started on this project. Uh, I kind of reached out to some people in the YouTube community if they wanted to help out with making some different parts. And he actually uh, did, we actually met each other at the Good of the Land Fest, which was several yeah. years ago in Texas. And, and uh, he actually made, at the time, some of these piston rods according to the blueprints that we had for the Stoker engine. And 1930s blueprints. 1930s <laughs> blueprint. And, uh, you know, this was a part, there's by no means that I couldn't have done this on my manual machines, but you got tapers on both ends and some other things going on with it. And it was really a part that was ideal for CNC. You had some CNC equipment, so uh, mm -hmm. you agreed to make these. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, they turned out beautiful. Uh, did a really nice job on them, and we will be installing these nice new piston rods on this project a little bit later down the road. So they're made right to the spec. And uh, when we were, when I was getting along on this thing, we've also got on the crossheads some uh, wrist pins that fit up into the crosshead. This is what the connecting rod connects to. Uh, and uh, basically, I, I get a close up here, I think, of this here in a minute, but. It fits up into this and, and that's what goes. Again, you got some tapers, some kind of weird geometry going on there. By no means not something I couldn't have done, but uh, it was just a good job for CNC. So I reached out to him again. He said, absolutely, he'd be glad to do it. Pick when I found out you were coming. Yeah. So uh, uh, got him to make a couple of these. So let me kind of zoom you in here. We'll show you these. Yeah, and I, I brought them to the army. He brought them <laughs> and delivered these all the way. No shipping charges at all. Yeah, so. I was worried that the airport people would open it up and cut the bag and slip the thing, but oh, they, yeah. they didn't mess with it. Good deal. Let me, <laughs> let me zoom in here and show you this. So again, this is the original wrist pin, and it's broken. And it was broken when I got it. And the other one was missing. I don't even know where it's at, but we had the blueprints for it, no big deal. But it's got a taper here. This whole section is tapered. It's kind of unusual in that the center part here is one diameter and that's where the connecting rod bearing fits up onto, but it's tapered on either ends. The challenging part on this, you know, doing this with a taper attachment is, is that this kind of comes up to a shoulder. This is a constant taper from one end to the other, but it's, you got an area, about half of it would be cut out if you did a constant taper. Again, is it doable on a manual machine? Absolutely, but trying to keep that constant taper would have been difficult. So CNC was really uh, a much easier way of doing this. So this just kind of fits up into this. Uh, there's a pin here that kind of prevents this whole thing from rotating. And then you got the castle nut on the end that screws on, and there's a pin that goes through it that keeps this from rotating off. So uh, it all kind of holds it in place. So the new ones that he did is right here. And we did one little modification. He put a piece here. This is for work holding while we're doing some further machining that's got to be done to these. Uh, this will be cut off before it's all done, but for right now, we've still got to do some stuff, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. But anyway, he, he made these parts. These are made out of low-carbon steel, and according to the blueprints, they are case-hardened. That makes them extremely tough. The low-carbon steel will, uh, it will, it's, it's not brittle, it will bend, it will whatever. It, it's, it's not something that's just going to break, uh, but what you have to do is you have to put carbon on the outside that's going through heat treat process, the carbon will actually absorb into the steel and you will have a layer of hard area right there around the surface while the rest of it is relatively soft. And uh, we're going to have to actually do that heat treat process, case harden these, 
And then after that, they have to be ground to the final size. So these are just a little bit oversized. So right now, when it fits up in here, you'll notice it doesn't go all the way in. That gives us a little bit of material to ground off. You left, what'd you say? 40? Uh, 40 thousandths on diameter. Okay, so we got a little bit of material to, to, to turn off of that. I'm wondering, how do you have an idea of how deep the, the carbon hardening goes? Um, it goes deeper than that, but it doesn't go real deep. And, and, okay. and I, I looked it all up several years ago when I was doing research on this, mm -hmm. and I don't know the answer off the top of my head. Oh, okay. I'll try to find that out and answer that when we do the, the case hardening. Oh, okay, cool. Because we'll do some videos on that when the yeah, time it's, comes. It's kind of like a samurai sword where they have yeah. a hard outer skin, but a softer center for yep. composite strength. Exactly. Hmm. You kind of get the, the best of both worlds. Yeah. So, you know. But anyway. He was kind enough to make me a couple of these, and uh, like I said, this is going to be a project coming down the road. I was telling him, I, I've got a cylindrical grinder here in the shop that I could do the grinding on, and I may end up using it, although I'm going to try to reach out to some guys that may have a CNC grinder that can actually grind this, because again, this is a continuous taper. Ideally, it would be done in one sweep on, a, on my grinder. But because you would have to do this side and this side separately, but keep them continuous, it would be ideal for CNC. So mm -hmm. we, we may look at getting these CNC ground. Hmm. Uh, we'll have to just, we'll, have, uh, we'll figure it out as we get there. So yeah, that'll we'll be interesting. Where it goes. But anyway, thought I'd introduce those. We'll be working with these parts a little bit later on. Great. So, you know, if you watch the channel regularly, you, you kind of know what this is. I want to mention it because some people just pick these things up in the middle, but this is a stoker engine. It goes on a steam locomotive. You're wearing a t-shirt on it right now. Yeah. Nashville, Tennessee is where they're restoring the steam locomotive. 576 is the engine. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And uh, they call us a stoker engine because it's actually, this isn't the engine that runs the locomotive, but it's in the tender of the locomotive. And it's basically kind of an auxiliary power unit. And in this case, it powers a, an auger that takes the coal from the tender of the locomotive and puts it into the uh, firebox of the engine. As the locomotives got bigger and bigger over time, they got to the point where a fireman just could not shovel enough coal to keep up with the demand for the locomotive. So they came up with these mechanical stokers that took the place of the shovel and with the mechanic put the, the coal in there. Often they still had to shovel a little bit in like get the corners and stuff just right, but the, most of the work was done by the mechanical stoker engine. And as they're restoring this locomotive, uh, they asked if we could help out by restoring the stoker engine that goes into that locomotive. Cool. Anyway, this project is moving along finally. We've, we've had some challenges. We've still got a lot of stuff to do to it. Uh, but I really appreciate your help. You've helped out on this project. Uh, uh, Blondie Hacks, which is, uh, oh goodness. Uh, Quinn. Quinn, yeah. My mind's here. Blank. Yeah, Quinn. 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 Yeah. Uh, she, well, she was actually out in California. She actually made these parts right here, which are. Uh, with the rails for the crossheads, we've been using those for doing our Babbitt for they'll actually go in here. Mm -hmm. She volunteered to make those on her YouTube channel. Uh, Brian Block uh, actually helped board the cylinders on yeah. his uh, horizontal boring mill before I had my horizontal boring mill going. Um, you helped out on a couple of things here. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. I can't. I haven't those. He, he attempted to do some stuff, but it didn't work out. Yeah. We really struggled getting these, these crossheads machined out here in the bottom. And even it's taken multiple attempts and multiple different machinery setups to kind of get all that done. But we finally got that done on, on the metal planer here in my shop. Yeah, you pretty much had to make the planer. I had to do this job. planer to do the job. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. had to re restore a planer. To, to, you had to restore a machine to restore another machine. Yeah. That's the story of my life. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> that's what you got to do. Yeah. <laughs> So, but anyway, we've had several people kind of collaborate with this project, and that's great. We appreciate it, and I appreciate your help. Good luck. Yeah, well, it's been a pleasure uh, working on this project. I feel like I'm part of history now. Absolutely. So. And go check out your channel. Tell me again. Yeah, it's a Dragonfly Engineering on YouTube. If you want to see things about in plastic injection molding or mold making or uh, general engineering tasks, we cover it all there. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. All right, guys. That's going to be a wrap on this one. It's just a little quick uh, update on some stuff, and you'll be seeing more with these wrist pins coming up real soon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Those thumbs up and comments are always great. We appreciate it. It helps out with the algorithm on YouTube. 
Uh, you can help out by supporting the site financially through Patreon, PayPal, and now through YouTube memberships. That helps out as well. Um, hit that like button, hit the uh, leave a comment down below. And as always, again, just thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys in the next video.